I've been dealing with MacBook overheating issues for the past month. After a lot of research and trial and error, I found ways for me to avoid these issues. And today, I'm going to share some solutions I used to solve my MacBook overheating issues. The main problem I had with overheating was that it caused my computer to throttle. While throttling, if you look at your activity monitor, you'll often see a process called kernel task that uses up a large percentage of your CPU. This is a way the OS can fake CPU cycles so less processing power is available to other processes. Although this leads to a decrease in temperature, it also leads to a very choppy experience where even simple tasks such as browsing the web can be near impossible. I use the 2019 MacBook Pro 16. I especially see this issue with external monitors and using applications that leverage the dedicated graphics cards such as Microsoft Teams. Here are some solutions that I believe will help manage your MacBook temperatures. The first solution is disabling Intel Turbo Boost. Intel processors have Turbo Boost, which gives it a burst in core frequency, which could make your computer feel more snappy, but at the same time generate more heat. If your computer is throttling, whatever benefits that you're getting out of the Turbo Boost are probably not worth it. I use a software called Turbo Boost Switcher, it allows me to disable Turbo Boost and has led to a large decrease in heat. If your CPU is Turbo Boosting, heat is being generated aggressively. And if your MacBook cannot cool your laptop fast enough, throttling occurs. After turning off Turbo Boost, my fan turns on less frequently and my CPU temperatures are cooler, close to 5-10 degrees. The next tip I have is to avoid using your GPU. For some MacBooks with a GPU, I recommend using the integrated graphics if you do not need to use the dedicated graphics. There's a software called GFX Card Status and it allows you to force integrated graphics. But note, you cannot force integrated graphics when using external monitors. At least this is the case with my MacBook Pro 16, where external monitors are required to use the dedicated graphics card. Another tip to avoid using the GPU which applies to people who have either a dedicated GPU or an integrated GPU, is to disable graphics acceleration. Many applications such as Chrome and Microsoft Teams have options to enable or disable graphics acceleration. And while graphics acceleration can be helpful for certain tasks, offloading work to your GPU can often cause more heat to be generated. And this is really an application to application basis I noticed this especially with Microsoft Teams graphic acceleration, but I have less problems with Google Chrome. I actually leave my Google Chrome hardware acceleration on. My next suggestion is to use ports on both sides of the laptop. If you have both your MacBook charger and your hub plugged into the same side of the laptop, heat will be concentrated in that area of the laptop. Due to the laptop's design, the side where the peripherals and the power are plugged in tend to get hotter. And a temporary fix I found to this was to unplug and plug into the other side of the laptop when experiencing throttling. And this is clearly not a fix. If you are able to, I recommend plugging the power and display on different sides of the laptop. It helps heat dissipate more efficiently. If you aren't using any external displays and are only using a power cable, I recommend you try plugging in the power to both the left and right side of the laptop. While researching online, I've seen many people claim that Plugging in power to a certain side of the laptop yields overall lower temperatures. And I can see these claims having merit as the heat generated from the CPU and GPU are not equally spread to both the left and right fans or even the left and right sides of the laptop. So plugging in power to the cooler side of the laptop will help spread the heat more evenly. To monitor any of these port configuration changes, I recommend using some software to monitor temperatures. Monitoring the CPU temperature is a good overall metric for seeing if your computer is throttling. My next suggestion is to ventilate your laptop. Don't place your laptop on a soft surface such as a pillow, and if possible, avoid placing a keyboard on top of the laptop. With how the MacBook is designed, a lot of the heat is dissipated through the chassis itself. That's why something such as a laptop stand can allow more air to be flowing through the bottom of the laptop, which can lower overall temperatures. I've tried a laptop stand, and I believe it definitely helps, but the effects of this change were more minor. But if you're constantly placing your laptop on a softer surface such as a pillow, I believe this change will help a lot. My last idea is the thermal pad mod, and this is a change that I would advise you to proceed at your own risk. 
This change involves adding thermal pads to the power regulators on the bottom of your laptop. And when these thermal pads come in contact with the bottom cover of your laptop, it allows the bottom cover of your laptop to act as a radiator. There are certain parts of your laptop that get very hot. And if you allow this heat to move to a different location, such as the bottom of your laptop, it just allows more heat to be dissipated. And yes, I have tried this mod and there are significant thermal improvements doing this mod. There are cons as well. The bottom of the laptop tends to have hotter temperatures and this change, although it is reversible, requires a more hands-on approach. Like some of the other tips I mentioned, I'll leave a link into the description where you can learn more about it. But to summarize the thermal pad mod, it involves removing the bottom cover, applying thermal pads anywhere from 1 to 3 millimeters thick, and placing the bottom cover back on. And those are all the tips I have to cover. Personally, I use every tip here except using ports on both sides as I use a Thunderbolt 3 dock. Overall, after following these steps, I haven't experienced throttling issues at all. I hope this helps. If you have any suggestions or tips on how to manage MacBook temperatures, please write it in the comments.